Hello everyone, thanks for joining us in ICC 2022. My name is Asil Koç and I'm a PhD candidate at McGill University under the supervision of Professor Lanak. Today I'll present our paper named as Full Duplex Non-Coherent Communications for Massive MIMO Systems with Analog Beamforming. Here is the brief outline of the presentation. After expressing our motivation for analog beamforming and non-coherent communication, the system model and the channel model are uh, expressed. Then uh, we present the, the proposed analog beamforming design. Then after the illustrative results, the, the presentation ends with the conclusion. Full duplex communication is considered one of the key enabling technologies uh, for the next generation communication systems because it can theoretically double the capacity by simultaneous transmission and reception over the same frequency band. However, the strong self-interference severely affects its performance. That's why advanced SI cancellation techniques are necessary to make it possible the full duplex communication. Uh, on the other hand, massive MIMO systems, by using large number of uh, transmit and receive antenna elements, it can have a uh, high beamforming can gain and it can enable the, uh, the larger uh, spectrum uh, efficiency. That's why the expected impacts of the full duplex can be extended with the massive MIMO because um, the, with, the, with the benefit of large antenna arrays, uh, we can have extremely narrow beams to suppress the strong self-interference power. Beamforming is a crucial signal processing technique for both downlink and uplink transmission. Although the fully digital beamforming, as shown in here, it is considered widely for the MIMO systems, the conventional MIMO systems, it is not applicable for the massive MIMO systems with large antenna arrays because it requires a single power-hungry RF chain per each antenna and it requires large channel estimation overhead size. And in the analog beamforming, it can remarkably reduce the, the number of RF chains. And uh, if we use the, if we apply the analog processing uh, at the RF stage by using the slow time varying CSI, it also enables the, the non-coherent communication. That's why it can reduce the hardware cost and complexity and the, also the power consumption. Considering the bidirectional communications among two users, there could be two different transmission schemes as full duplex or half duplex. And regarding the CSI requirement, we may consider either coherent communication or non-coherent communication, where non-coherent communication, the advantage is it doesn't require the CSI. On the other hand, the coherent communication, as an example for MQAM modulation, it's the pilot-based transmission and it requires the, the CSI. And considering that we have a flat fading channel and it is um, uh, it is constant during the, it's flat during the coherence block of Q symbol intervals. And the proposed full duplex non-coherent uh, transmission, it doesn't require the, uh, the, 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 the pilot uh, symbols to be transmitted. And we can use all symbol intervals for the data transmission, bidirectional data transmission between user one and user two. Now we move to system model. The model. In the system model, we consider a full duplex non-coherent point-to-point massive MIMO system, as shown in here, where the analog beamformers are supported by a single transmit and receive RF chains. Then the transmitted signal uh, during a coherence block is defined as a SI matrix, where F, FI is, the, uh, the, is the, the transmit analog beamformer and XI is the data symbol vector with Q symbols. Then the received signal uh, at the jade user is defined in equation one. And after combining, uh, we can define the combined signal as in equation two as a summation of intended signal plus self-interference plus noise. And uh, here the self-interference is occurred due to the full duplex transmission. And uh, in the combined signal, we have the effective intended and the SI channel. And our motivation is to maximize the effective intended channel while, while minimizing the effective SI channel. For the non-coherent communication, we follow a particular structured Grassmannian constellation proposed in reference 11 called as cube split constellation. Um, it forms Q Grassmannian cells to construct the data symbol vector X. And each, each, um, each cell has the Voronoi shape as de defined in equation three. And um, for the Q cell, we have the, the, the highest uh, magnitude on the Q dimension of the uh, the, the data symbol vector. And then the remaining complex elements uh, represents the two times Q minus one real coefficient. And each of them will uh, representing a dimension to define the Euclidean space. 
And then for every dimension, we have BV bits to characterize the corresponding dimension. And then we define the, uh, the uniform space points on, the, on, the, on that uh, dimension. And finally, we use the, uh, we, uh, use the mapping function to define the, the data symbol vector. And uh, in, the, in the cube split constellation, in general, we can carry B bits. And it is the summation of uh, the number of bits that we put every cell. It is representing log 2 Q. And then we, put, we carry uh, BV bits for every dimension. And in general, uh, equation 6 shows us how many bits we can carry in the cube split constellation. And we use the BAPIC function defining equation 7 to find the, the data symbol vector. And then we can use the inverse mapping function for the decoding. And then here is an example. If we have the Q equals 2 symbol intervals, and then we have in that case, we have two dimensions and we put one bit per every dimension. And in general, in that scenario, we can carry three bits uh, as shown in equation nine uh, uh, to be transmitted per every coherence block. And then it shows, the, this table shows us the, uh, the mapping actually. Uh, we can have three bits to be transmitted. If the, the first bit is zero, then we use the cell index one. If the first bit is one, then we use the cell index two. Uh, cell index two. And here, the cell index are represented as shown in here. Uh, if, the, the, uh, if we choose the cell index one, then the, the highest component is located in the first uh, uh, component. Otherwise, we have the highest component in the second position if we are on the second cell. And the remaining two bits are characterized the, uh, the other component as shown in, in here. In the, in the system model, we have actually two different kinds of channels. Uh, the first one is the intended channel between uh, the user i to user j and we use the uh, the, the 3d geometry based millimeter wave channel model to define the, the intended channel as shown here it is a function of the transmit and receive phase response uh, uh, vectors and they are the functions of the slow time varying angular information and the second channel uh, uh, second one is the, the SI channel matrix, and it is composed of the line of sight and non line of sight component, as shown in equation 11. Here, the first line of sight component is present between the uh, between the each transmit and receive uh, uh, antenna uh, pairs, and uh, we had the, the transmit and receive antennas are separated with the antenna isolation block. That's why uh, we have. The, the PISDB, uh, the, the isolation provided by the antenna isolation. And that's why the, the power of the line of sight is inversely proportional to the, uh, to, the, uh, to the amount of antenna isolation provided by the uh, antenna isolation block. And the second part is the line of sight, the, the, the reflected non-line of sight component. And as shown in here, um, it, is, it follows similar to the intended channel. It follows the, the 3D geometry based millimeter wave channel. Now we present the proposed analog beamformer design for the full duplex non-coherent communication. Um, in the analog beamformer, we first define the, the effective intended channel and the effective SI channel. Uh, here, in the effective uh, intended channel, the channel uh, matrix is multiplied with the, the corresponding transmit and uh, receive uh, analog beamformers. And if we expand the, the channel matrix according to the, uh, the, the previous defined the, the, the channel characteristic, uh, the, the transmit RFB informer is multiplied with the, with the transmit, uh, uh, transmit phase response matrix. And similarly, the receive, uh, the receive analog B informer is multiplied with the receive phase response matrix. And now we will use that. Uh, in order to use that characteristic, we define the, uh, the angular support, uh, namely the AOD and AOA support for the, for the intended channel. And similarly, we apply the same approach for the for the effective SI channel, and we define the, the angular support as well. Then, um, in order to build the, uh, the, the transmit and receive uh, beam formers, uh, we define the, the corresponding steering vectors, as shown in here. Then, um, in order to cover also the, the complete angular domain, the, the quantized angular pairs are defined as shown in here. They, they are, uh, uh, now, we need to find the, uh, the optimal angle pair uh, uh, to maximize the, the intended channel power while minimizing the, the self-interference power. That's why when we choose the angular pairs, we can we would like to choose the angular pairs inside the, the AOD support of the intended channel, and uh, it should be also outside of the, the angular support of the SI channel. And then 
uh, for the uh, for the uh, the uh, for the uh, the transmit RFP informers, we uh, we have the, the multiplication between the transmit phase response matrix with the with the with the RFP informer. That's why we'd like to maximize that multiplication. Similarly, in the in the receive RFP informer, we have the multiplication with the receive phase response matrix, and then we'd like to maximize that multiplication. And then finally, we find the the, the transmit and receive analog beam informer vectors with the optimal quantized angle pairs as shown in here. And now we move to the illustrative results. Uh, in the illustrative results, the, the bit, we present the, uh, the bit error rate performance uh, evaluation of the, full, the proposed full duplex non-coherent massive MIMO systems uh, with respect to the reference systems uh, shown in here, like the half duplex non-coherent, full duplex uh, coherent, and the half duplex uh, coherent schemes as well. Uh, then, uh, here, uh, we assume that each user transmits B bits of information per uh, coherence block uh, for every uh, uh, reference scheme, including the proposed one. And then uh, the simulation setup, according to the 3GPP release 16, is defined in here. Here, uh, just to highlight some important parameters, we have uh, 64 transmit receive antenna elements at the at each user and the, the coherence block length is considered either two or four. And then we are operating at 28 uh, gigahertz having 100 megahertz bandwidth and so on. And in the first illustrative results, we compare the full duplex non-coherent scheme with the, uh, with the half duplex non-coherent and the half duplex coherent schemes versus the array size. And now we consider the antenna isolation uh, is the 74 dB as uh, shown in the practical studies in reference one. And now we observe that uh, as long as the, the array size increases, uh, we have a better performance with the, uh, with the full duplex transmission compared to, compared to uh, half duplex uh, counterparts. Now, and uh, what we observe, uh, the, the, the main reason here is that we have improved self-interference cancellation uh, with the high beam forming gain and the narrow beams as long as the, the array size increases. And now uh, the, the bit error rate performance this time is plotted versus the, uh, the transmit power. Here, either we consider three bit uh, transmission or five bit transmission with the coherence block length of two. And then now we consider that uh, the, for the full duplex, we consider various um, antenna isolation scenarios from 40 dB to 80 dB. And now what we observe, as long as the antenna isolation improves, we have better error performance uh, with, the, with the full duplex non-coherent transmission. And it can outperform uh, the, its half duplex counterparts. And what we observe in the, in the if we send three bits, now we have uh, around 7.6 dB performance gap, but the performance gap improves to 13.5 dB when we have 5-bit uh, transmission per coherence block. And now also we observe that half duplex and coherent is better than the half duplex uh, coherent transmission. And finally, we compare the, the proposed full duplex and coherent with the, uh, with the full duplex coherent uh, transmission. And uh, here we have either, uh, we are sending either 8-bit or 14-bit. Uh, during the coherence uh, block length of uh, four simple intervals. Then here we observe that for every scenario we have better performance than the uh, uh, than the, the, the coherence uh, one. And then uh, the, also the, the, again the performance gap improves as long as we increase the, the number of bits to be transmitted. And uh, we also observe that there is a, a the, there is an error flow behavior in the full duplex transmission, but the error flow is observed at a uh, lower bit error rate, and then it can improve the, the error performance as well. In conclusion, uh, a normal full duplex non-coherent transmission scheme is proposed for the massive MIMO systems, where we develop an analog beam forming design uh, via slow time varying channel state information, namely the AOD and AOA parameters. That's why the proposed um, technique does not require the instantaneous CSI. And we show that FDNC remarkably improved the error performance compared to its half duplex counterparts, and it can reduce the, the error flow uh, at, observed at the, at the high transmit power regime uh, compared to the, the full duplex coherent scheme. And here are the references, and that's end of my presentation. Thanks for listening.